morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. And so good uh, to see each and every one of you. And uh, good to spend some time before the service fellowshipping with you and seeing the smiles. And, and it's just wonderful being in God's house. Amen. And I love the song that the musicians are playing. We adopted it as our theme song back at the beginning of the year. So let's all stand together, if we will, and let's sing, My Hope is Jesus, and to thank Him for the victory we have in Him as we sing these three verses together.
wonderful singing. You may be seated. And again, we're so glad to be in service with you this morning. And we love you. So good to see each and every one of you. Thank for the spirit that's already here this morning. And just praying that the Lord will meet with us and to challenge us in this time together. Brother Dalton, would you stand and lead us in this opening prayer, please? Amen. Just have a couple of things in the way of announcements. Would you again just want to keep every, everything in the forefront of everyone's minds? Uh, first, of course, uh, we're going to having our men's cookout uh, uh, coming up on July 19th. So that is on Tuesday evening here at the church at 6.30, all right? Please uh, continue to be inviting people. Please make sure you are able to attend as well. Uh, we always look forward to it and always have a wonderful time, wonderful food, and also a great spiritual uh, challenge for us every uh, single day. Uh, every single time that we have an opportunity to meet. Also, for our uh, youth camp, again, it's coming up closer and closer. We have just just about two weeks, actually, and we'll be heading on out to camp, actually. We're ex very, very excited about it. Uh, I've had young people talking to, talking to me about it for a couple of weeks now, how excited they are to be able to head out. So uh, for our uh, fundraisers, again, we are... We simply we want to do these fundraisers to alleviate the pressure off of families as much as possible. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody who has come to me and said that they are more than happy to sponsor kids. Uh, please, if you are, again, willing to do that, please come and talk to us. We are, uh, I'm sure parents will be more and more than happy for it. Uh, but it's fantastic just to be able to be a, uh, just to be a blessing, even if it's an, an anonymous blessing to people. Gods know that people don't have to know all the time about it. That's wonderful to be able to do. Uh, for our fundraisers right now, of course, we have our sign-up sheets and everything out at the uh, out at the welcome center right now for our hire a kid day uh, we have already got a few people signed up to hire a couple of our kids to go and do some work for them to help alleviate the cost of camp uh, please go on out there we've got a list of all of our campers who will be going uh, have your name uh, the day you would like them to come out and do that because we have uh, we kicked that off actually uh, yesterday so that's going to go all the way up until the 23rd as well uh, and uh, if you put your name, the day you would like them to come, and the young people you would like to bring out to, uh, help, uh, to help you with a couple of things, uh, whatever it might be, yard work, housework, they can do about anything. They are, the, they are more than happy to do that as well. We have our spaghetti dinner coming up here on this Wednesday night. All right, that is going to be... Uh, starting at uh, f uh, 5 o'clock, actually, and go all the way up to 6.30 for our uh, spaghetti dinner. The cost for that is $20 for a family or $7 a plate uh, if, you, if it is just yourself. Uh, we, again, uh, for everyone, for all of our uh, young kids who come out and help out, uh, the money that is collected all through that will be divided equally among all of the helpers for that evening to, again, try to alleviate the cost. Uh, in, in regards to camp, we also have, again, our camp packing list out at the Welcome Center. If you have not picked that up yet, please do so. We have got it uh, ready for you. These are the camp's recommendations for everything. This is not simply us. This is what they say. Definitely bring this. Please do not bring this. They do uh, recommend. This is not required. But if you would like your young person to have some money to go to their snack shack or something like that or, or their uh, gift shop, they recommend anywhere between $50 and $75 uh, per kid if you would like uh, for your young person to be able to, uh, to do that. Uh, also, I, I was, I've been talking with them a lot this past week, uh, getting, making sure everything is ready. Our registration is all in order so far. The only thing that they are missing from the parents right now are some emails that they send out very regularly, uh, once every couple of weeks from what the lady told me, and it is the medical info or the, uh, or the waivers that uh, need to be signed by all of the parents. Uh, if we need to, I will again be happy to send them, uh, ask them to send it out to them again this week. It's an electronic thing. You just sign it right there in your email and, and it sends it directly back to them and it goes right into their system and we are good to go. So please, if you have not uh, done that yet, please be looking for it. Uh, if you happen to have deleted it, you can just go back into your uh, messages a little farther back. Again, they send it out just like every couple of weeks and uh, you can sign it right there and then that will be taken care of and we will be set 
uh, for that. For uh, I, I just want to give this a quick announcement in regards. Uh, we, I would like to have a meeting tonight with all the parents who have a kid coming to camp tonight after the evening service. Uh, we will be very, very brief just to go over a couple of specific things for us. If you have any questions for me, please come and talk to me. I will be happy to. Uh, if I don't have the answer, I will definitely find it for you. That much I do promise. That is all that I have currently right now in the way of announcements. Brother James is going to come at this time and uh, lead us in a quick time of uh, scripture reading for us. Thank you for this opportunity and this some of the scriptures that helps me. You know, in the Old Testament, Moses gave them uh, guidelines with the Ten Commandments. And to me, this is a scripture that I think God used Paul to send to the letter uh, Church of Thessalonica. And it's kind of the Ten Commandments of the New Testament. Not that we, it's not a, obtaining salvation. But just like for the people of Israel who had the Ten Commandments for a guideline, I think this is kind of a guideline for a, a church member or, or a, as it was for them right then, the saints of the church. And uh, that's what I read it for and that's what I got out of it. But in order to read it, I'm going to have to put my eyeballs on it. But in, in Thessalonians chapter 5, and uh, he had just talked over about the rapture of the church and the uh, coming of the Lord. And then in verse 8, he said, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and uh, for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. Defies not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearances of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. And I think Paul was just, like I said, I think just like Moses said, the guidelines with the Ten Commandments. I think Paul, through the Holy Spirit's guidance, give us a guideline right here. I think this, I consider the Ten Commandments of the New Testament church. And I think that's the challenge for all of us here today. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother James. Aren't you thankful that the Word of God brings us such comfort? And it surely challenges us and convicts us, but I'm thankful that it brings comfort to our lives. And I want to do something this morning. Um, I didn't get to get to every one of you and say something, so probably the best way to do this is just to say if you uh, have a special need or you have somebody in your family who has a special need, uh, I want to right now just have a special time uh, of prayer as a church family. And uh, if you uh, are willing and able um, as a person in need or representing a family member who may not could be here because of a physical situation, uh, to gather around this front here just a moment and uh, we want to have a special word of prayer with you um, 
I, I first want to ask, does anybody have a specific uh, procedure or surgery this morning? Would you flag me, or this, this week, not this morning, but this week, would you flag me down? Um, I'm going to mention yours in just a minute, sis. Anybody else? Okay, because we want to include you specifically. We'd ask you to pray for Miss Joanne's fins last week, and uh, hers got postponed. And so if I was able to get to you, uh, or if I wasn't able, but you have a specific need that you would like prayer for, would you go ahead and start working your way to the front? And as you're moving this way, I want to share with you, uh, Miss Yvonne just found out, and uh, I was fixing to walk out of my office this morning and uh, to come over here, and she said, Preacher, can I talk to you for a minute? And uh, she found out this week she has cancer, and she is going to have to go through the process and the procedures of uh, removing uh, the areas where the cancer is at. And we prayed together there in my office, and uh, before we walked out, she said, Preacher, she said, on a regular basis, she said, I'll just walk into my home and just lift my hands to the Lord and praise Him for His goodness. You know, we can praise Him even when we're hurting, even when we get news that we have cancer. And she's got to go Tuesday uh, to Raleigh uh, to begin the process they're going to do so sis would you come to this altar or front row and anyone else would you just go ahead and move now if you're physically able if you're not um uh, if you do it on behalf i know i said something to the johns wayne would you come for your wife and for they've got two funerals uh today to attend and they were just in one uh, uh yesterday one is miss ellen's cousin um Barbara, if y'all felt uh, comfortable coming, you're welcome to. Again, I didn't get there, but I don't think I need to. Teresa, we're still praying for you and your family. Um, so you feel welcome to come, whether I was able to catch you or not. You gather around uh, here. And then I'm going to ask some of our folks. that, that you, You're able, no pressure. But if you're able to gather around some of the ladies with the ladies, let's come and hold a hand, put a put a hand on a shoulder. Men as well uh, with the men that are gathered here. Some are on the altar and most look to be right here on these front three rows. Uh, would you do that? And let's just gather together. If you're not able to get around them, you just join us right there where you're at. That's right. Get a hand on a shoulder. And uh, we need some more men up here if we can do that. And uh, ladies, with that, that's great. That's wonderful. Well, let's bear one another burden uh, right now together as a church family. Dear sweet Heavenly Father, we know that our needs today are great. But we are forever grateful that you are greater than anything we have ever or could ever face. Lord, you're greater than the cancer that hits our bodies. You're greater than the infirmities that some of these dear folks have and are dealing with for some time. You're greater than the hurt we feel. You're greater than the pain that enters our body. So right now, I pray a special prayer over these individuals. First of all, to our knowledge, the only one going for a specific major or this week is Miss Yvonne. Lord, I just found out that after having a mammogram done, Lord, that she had cancer and they want to rest the removing from her body. I pray that you will give her grace, give her strength, she begins these steps that many of our folks either have been through or have a loved one to go through. God, would you wrap your loving arms around her this week as she goes Tuesday? Comfort her in a special way. May she continue to feel the praise in her heart and allow that to come off of her lips. For you are a great God. Lord, for the many rep here that ongoing pain, Lord, in their own bodies that they're dealing with. Some of them are here for a spouse. Some of them are here for a family member or a close friend. Lord, we think of the prices Miss Ellen and Mark Holmes sick today, and on top of that, she has a funeral for a cousin and a funeral for a, a close family. Lord, comfort all of these families, Lord, during this time. Give Brother Wayne, uh, Lord, wisdom and discernment from you, maybe even able to speak a word of comfort, love, and truth to those that he'll interact 
with later today. Lord, I pray for Miss Joanne Finn. We know that last week she was anticipating some things. They got put off on hold again. And we know this dear lady has been just so tough and dependent upon you through the journey of her physical infirmities. Would you touch her and lift her up? Lord, we thank our brother Ed. Such a joy every time we're able to see him walk in be in service with us Lord he is totally believing in you for victory and for healing in his life and we know you have the power and Lord right now you have chosen and are choosing to bring him back to strength Lord where he can be with his church family Lord be here to worship you where he longs to be Lord we thank you for that would you give him the strength he needs well, Miss Brenda's been a little sick this week we're so thankful that she's able to be here with her daughter today would you bless Lord this family as well Continue to give them the comfort they need. And then, Lord, the needs just go one on the other. We will not mention every one, but I pray for every person that has come forward for a special prayer, a blessing. Lord, they'll feel that now and throughout the day and throughout this week as they enter into different appointments and follow-ups and situations that are ongoing. God, may they feel your strength. May they feel your presence. May they feel the love of their church family. Lord, but most of all, uh, Lord, your hand upon their life. And then, Lord, for the few, maybe even more that I know of in here today, Lord, they're in their seat. Lord, they have a need. I pray that you'll touch them. I pray that you'll bring healing to their body. I pray you'll give them answers, Lord. Some of them are still awaiting answers on their own life to know what's uh, going on exactly and what to do. God, we're thankful that we can trust you. We don't understand. We can look to and lean upon you. So a special prayer, Lord, over these individuals right now. Would you uplift them and give them the strength they need? It's in your son's precious name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. And amen. As they make their way back to their seats, I'll ask all of you to join them in standing, if you will, where they're at or where you're at. Let's stand together as we sing this next song. No matter what we face or go through, I'm thankful that in Christ alone we find our hope. In Christ alone we find our strength. In Christ alone we find our victory. And uh, let's sing these verses together as we think about His goodness and His blessings upon us and long for that day that He comes to take us home. Uh, you know the song. Let's sing it out loud this morning.
think about what he's done for us and rejoice in the day that is to come. seated great singing great truth and uh, wow so thankful uh, that in Christ church we have hope amen we have victory we have strength and uh, not only uh, for those needs represented there in that prayer time we have strength for each and every day I'm glad I'm in church this morning how about you thankful for his presence and uh, for his spirit here with us we're gonna uh, prepare to worship him uh, with our tithes and offerings uh, this morning, and uh, those of you men that are planning to come Tuesday night, we know summertime can be hectic, and so we even thought about if we should reschedule. We have our speaker lined up, and I believe you'll enjoy uh, hearing from him. And so, men, we just need your help. Brother Caleb, did you get that sign-up list there in the lobby uh, out there? And so if you'll sign up, please, men, right after the service. This just helps us know how much food to prepare, and that uh, we always, we've been having 30-plus men, and so we like to anticipate that. But if you'll help us by signing up, I know it's something you got to remember after the service, uh, but if you'll try to do that and help us sign up with how many is coming in your family and bringing your guests, we'd appreciate uh, that very, very much, okay? And then we're going to have two phases of new membership. Uh, we have some families that are wanting to join the church, and some of them are coming from like-minded uh, churches, and so it's just going to be a transfer. That is going to be phase one, and uh, we're going to do that here soon. Uh, those families will be uh, coming into our fellowship uh, from a sister church, a letter of recommendation, so we'll receive them uh, as said. And then phase two will be families that want to join that they may not necessarily came from a sister church or maybe they uh, hadn't been associated uh, with a like-minded church in the past and they'll be phase two they'll be coming in as new members as well we'll bring both of those groups before you uh, here Lord willing in uh, the near future and so you families that are in uh, those uh, categories you be thinking about that mindful of that if you have any questions about that you can see me and we'll be getting some material to you and helping you with that so keep that in mind and then the last thing before our uh, uh, offering is the uh, choir. Uh, uh, I have missed uh, hearing and leading and being a part of uh, the choir, uh, but boy, they do so much for this ministry, and we did feel like it's good for them to have some time off, And uh, but we're ready to start back, and I know we've already sent that out, and those of you who are here in our midweek service have heard that announcement already, but we're starting back the Practice Today choir members, okay, and then Lord willing be singing uh, back to our church family again uh, next week and moving forward, so I need you to help me through Fold, okay? First of all, help me. Uh, you that were in the choir, show your appreciation by coming back to the choir this afternoon at 5 o'clock. One of the dangers about taking a break from any, anything is uh, uh, gives the devil a little room and a window to, to work on some minds and, and not come up. So let me encourage you, everybody that was uh, a part of it already, Come on back today at 5 o'clock, okay? You fight that discouragement and uh, those thoughts and be on back. And to tap some buddies, too. Make sure the person on either side of you, in front of you, behind you is coming back. Get them today, and let's meet at 5 o'clock. Second of all is for anyone who would like to be a part of uh, the choir, and uh, you want to get in and, and be a part of that ministry, and uh, we want to encourage you to do that. This is a good time when you start back up and uh, to, to uh, have some others uh, join in on that ministry. And um, so if you are a member of the church or plan on being in these member groups that we are fixing uh, to do and you want to be a part of the choir, uh, if you'll also join us at 5 o'clock and uh, help us there, we look forward to having some new faces uh, with us. I've already heard about a couple. And then the third category, I need the parents and kids to listen up. We've done this from time to time, but we're going to try something here. And we're going to invite all of our fifth through uh, college age, okay, kids that want to be a part of the choir, uh, 
uh, to, uh, to come and join us as well and sing as a ministry in the choir. And um, for those of the kids, these families, you know, you're here every week and you're in services and you're plugged in here to uh, the church. And uh, our kids sing often for us on PM services. They'll do that. Uh, but parents do know this is a commitment. Uh, they'll be coming to the 5 o'clock practice as well, and they'll be singing in the AM and PM services. They'll be a part of the choir, okay? And so we want to give you that opportunity, parents. So if you want to talk that over this afternoon, if you have any questions for us, certainly reach out to us. But that's the three heads we wanted to hit this morning on inviting our choir members back. Make sure you're back in your place, inviting new ones to join us, and then making sure everyone understood it's opened up for that age group of kids, fifth grade and up, if they want to be a part of that, singing on a regular and weekly basis with us. I, I believe they'll do nothing but help us and be a blessing uh, to our church and in their lives as well. So you keep those things in mind. Let's start back today at 5 o'clock. If you'll be here a few minutes early, choir members, uh, to get your books regathered and whatnot from where we left off. Appreciate that, and thank you for your time on that. All right, let's worship the Lord in our giving. Uh, what a pleasure it is to give back to him, and uh, so trust you'll be faithful to do that. I know summer is a time of traveling, and some weeks we're gone and out, and you just make sure you stay faithful uh, to the Lord in your giving, and, um, and I know he'll bless you for that. All right, so let's ask him to bless uh, the gift and the giver here. After he does, sections 1 and 3, if you'll lead the way and come in, then sections 2 and 4, uh, if you'll bring your offerings uh, forward after that. Brother James, would you lead us in this prayer, please? It is well with my soul and a tremendous job. All right, we're so thankful for our junior church and children's church ministries. We're going to dismiss the uh, kids at this time. Kids, we love you, and thank you for being a part of the first part of our service, and we appreciate the teachers that rotate on a regular basis. 
and uh, ministering to them. And our junior church now meets uh, just right up the ramp there in the old sanctuary and the children's church across the way. And appreciate all those that uh, pour into uh, their lives. All right, while they're exiting out, we're excited to have uh, Miss Sharon to sing for us this morning, and uh, she has had to take a little time of leave uh, in her time of recovery, and it just worked out. She was, I reached out to her and, and asked her kind of for a time frame, and she was good with this week, but her boot was still on at that time, and uh, even this week, uh, as of Friday, her, her boot was still on at selective times, and I uh, was so thankful for her heart to minister, and uh, always just uh, feel like her songs are are well chosen and, and prayed over and a blessing uh, to us all. So, sis, you come right on up and uh, sing for us this morning, and I know it'll be a blessing uh, to us all. Good to have you back. Your greatest joy or your deepest pain when you're really needing an answer If it matters to you It doesn't only matter to you If it matters to you It matters to the Master Thank for that truth. It matters to you. You know, sometimes we belittle the things and we we buy the lie uh, that ah, oh, it's too small or insignificant. Uh, that's one of my wife's favorite songs, and uh, certainly appreciate and love that as well. I know that was a blessing to you. Second Corinthians chapter four, please. 
It is great to be back uh, in church with you in God's house together with our church family. And uh, thank you for uh, your uh, prayers. And I don't want to take time away from the preaching, but boy, some of the texts and messages some of you sent to me uh, was about as good to me as the, as the time away. What a blessing. And uh, believe it or not, it, not every text message I get is an encouragement. <laughs> and uh, but some of you sent some encouraging messages, and I've already thanked you personally, and I thank you publicly uh, for that. What a blessing and encouragement to my soul and spirit. We knew going it would not be a time of rest. If you've ever never taken four kids on vacation, please try it sometime. And, uh, uh, but it was a great time away. I just asked the Lord to renew my, my, my mind a little bit, and, uh, and I... I I've, Thank you for your prayers with that. It's good to know that uh, we are able to find some good churches to be in, uh, like-minded churches, uh, to be able to worship the Lord while we were away, and uh, even encouraged uh, uh, by what we saw God doing in uh, those churches. I was also encouraged by the fact that while I was sitting, uh, even uh, being away and David needing a mental uh, break, while I'm sitting there listening to preachers, I wanted to preach, and so I guess it's a good thing that you miss preaching, right, preachers, and that you miss that, and so I'm thankful to be back in the pulpit today. But while we were gone, God used this verse to, to speak uh, to, to my heart, and uh, so I want to share that with you uh, this morning, and I hope that it'll be a blessing to you as well. Along life's way and along uh, the journey of ministry, it's easy for uh, ministers of the gospel uh, to get discouraged and to lose heart under the weight and the burden of everything that goes on. And as we join Paul here, of course, you know, Paul, I don't have to tell you um, everything he was going through, but uh, the attacks that he was facing were specific in his case. Uh, they were attacks against his character and attacks against the uh, legitimacy of his apostleship. I mentioned that a few weeks ago in another passage of Scripture. Uh, but then also there were attacks about his effectiveness in ministry. Believe it or not, not everybody liked Paul's personality. Aren't you thankful God can use different personalities to accomplish what he wants to accomplish? And uh, Paul, was, Paul was not your, your sweet, uh, you know, get up close to type guy, tell you what you want to hear. Uh, and so he was being attacked on every angle and a lot of critics out there. And uh, as I was thinking on that, uh, this is a, a book that we as preachers went through in college, and I believe the college still uses. And I want to start off by introduction with a quote from Spurgeon on this regards. He says, Our work, when earnestly undertaken, lays us open to attacks in the direction of depression. Who can bear the weight of souls without sometimes sinking to the dust? Now you think about that. You know, our work is not, you know, making sure this is done and this is paid. The work of, of ministers is that of soul work. Souls are in the balance every single week. He goes on to say, passionate longings after men's soul, uh, excuse me, conversion, if not fully satisfied, consume the soul with anxiety and disappointment. To see the hopeful turn aside, the godly grow cold, professors abusing their privileges, and sinners waxing more bold in sin, are not these sights enough to crush us to the earth? The kingdom comes not as we would. The reverend name is not hallowed as we desire. And for this we must weep. How can we be otherwise than sorrowful? While men believe not our report and the divine arm is not revealed, all mental work tends to weary and to depress. For much study is a weariness of the flesh. But ours is more than mental work. It's heart work. The labor of our inmost soul. And then he goes on to conclude this portion. He says, such soul travail as that of a faithful minister will bring on occasional seasons of exhaustion when heart and flesh will fail. Spurgeon still greatly quoted and referenced even today or delivered words there that were certainly applicable in his day and hour and certainly applicable in this day and hour. We've often said ministry is not for wimps and that is uh, for all of us so don't tune me out yet because you're going to see where Paul is going with this idea of ministry. 
here in this passage of Scripture. Let's stand together if you're physically able. And as you do, I want to remind you that chapter divisions in the Bible are not inspired, okay? Don't pass out on me or faint, okay, or tur- turn around and leave, okay? All the Bible's inspired, and the last verse of one chapter is inspired, and the first verse of another chapter is inspired, but the chapter divisions uh, sometime are not in the practical place in our reading of the Bible as they were as the author gave them. And that's why in this case you have chapter 4 starting off with the word therefore. Paul was not done uh, with his thought. And so although our text verse this morning is only one verse, okay, because I believe it is actually right in the middle of his thought, we're going to back up uh, to chapter 3 and begin reading so we can understand a little bit more of what Paul uh, was saying and then why he therefore is into verse 1 of chapter 4. Reading in verse 6 of chapter 3, would you join me? Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament or the New Covenant, not of the letter or the law, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? There's already a comparison that's being made between the law and the Spirit of God. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory... Much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Okay, again, comparing the old covenant, the letter of the law that Moses and them lived under, to the new covenant uh, that we live under, guided by the Spirit of God. Verse 12, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Not, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart, referring to the law. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil, well, you want to say amen, hallelujah here, shall be taken away. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now with the context of the old covenant compared to the new covenant and the doing away with of the law and the new covenant under the Spirit of God, then he says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, the ministry from the Spirit of God of the uh, 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 giving out of the gospel, which he refers to in verse 3. Now that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. As we have received mercy, would you say it with me? We faint not. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. And you just spoke the title of the message this morning. We faint not. Heavenly Father, we ask for your help in this time together. May your words already preached and worked my heart and spirit. Lord, reach your people this morning in a special way. May we tear down any walls and keep your spirit from doing the work that needs to be done. Give us your help and your power. In your son's precious name, we ask these things. Amen and amen. We know the Bible says in Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap. We all like due season, right? We all like reaping season. We'll reap, but then that verse finishes with a similar thought by saying what? If we 
faint not. Paul says here in this first verse that we have a ministry that we've received by mercy. And because of that, he says, we faint not. I was blessed several weeks ago, I think it now it was, to visit with the Tedders. And Miss Wanda, as we were talking, she shared this with me before, but says I was so blessed by the fact as we were talking about her longevity in ministry, I may have even mentioned this before, how she told me uh, that because of her longevity in ministry, she's been able to see those four and five, maybe sometime three, maybe sometimes six-year-olds go up into junior and teen and college and probably on into marriage and ministry, I, th- I think you mentioned, but not, not that far, okay, she said, no, not, not been at that long, but to go all the way through the stages of, of ministry here, and what a blessing that was, and the only way that she and anybody else is able to enjoy those blessings is because we faint not. I'm sure there's been times along the way for you, as there has been for all of us, that we felt like fainting and that we felt like saying, you know what, I put my time in and and here we go. But sometimes we miss out on the blessings because of that. And so Paul challenges us here, and I want to give you three areas, and I'll try to do it quickly. First of all, I want you to see we have a responsibility. Preacher, why, why, are you, why are you coming back telling us that we cannot faint? We cannot grow weary. We cannot stop. We cannot quit. Can I tell you, first of all, because we have a responsibility. He says in this verse, therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Again, he's comparing it to uh, the, the new covenant, and we know the veil was torn, and we now have access to the Father. We don't live under the law. The Spirit of the Lord guides us. And we have the ministry of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. That is our responsibility. And so, again, the, the going back to verse 3, it connects us. That word, therefore, connects us back to the thought that he was giving there about the new covenant. And where the old covenant, he said, killeth and is by the law, we know the new covenant gives life. Amen. The new covenant gives salvation. The new covenant brings about righteousness in our life. And how many of you can praise his name this morning that the new covenant brings transformation in our lives today? I'm thankful for that. So the new covenant, he says, we have this ministry. Paul was aware that he possessed this opportunity, this gift from the Lord to proclaim. That's why in verse 3, we we will not connect verses 2 and 3 this morning, but he says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid from them that are lost. Our ministry, our responsibility as ministers of Christ is to be about getting the gospel out to a lost and dying world. So Paul had been called to proclaim the gospel, but may I submit something to you this morning. If you are a child of God, first of all, praise God for that, amen? If you're a child of God, you too possess this ministry. Amens, we're not as plentiful that go around, but you too possess this ministry that Paul is talking about. It's not just for Paul, it's not just for full-time clergy. You as a believer have an obligation to share the good news of Jesus Christ with this world. If you don't believe me, let's dive in closer to Paul's words. First of all, I want you to see about this responsibility that it is personal. It is personal. Okay, so we're not, you're not receiving this message and saying, that's right, Brother Jonathan, that's right, Brother Caleb, that's right, you know, and you fill in the blank uh, of some staff or leaders in the church. No, it, it's personal to each and every one of us. A very practical sense, I want you to understand, all believers, if you're a believer this morning, say amen. All believers are ministers of the gospel. If you're saved, you're born again, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are a minister of the gospel. So this doesn't just isolate it to some special paid clergy class or individual. This verse applies to us all. Let me prove it to you. Paul here does not use the word I. Paul doesn't use the word me, Bobby. He doesn't use the word mine. He doesn't use any singular tense word when he says therefore seeing help me we have this ministry 
can I just call a quick time out and thank God? Aren't you thankful we can serve the Lord together to further the cause of the gospel? Praise God for that. So it's personal. You've got to rake this in this morning. You, as a believer, have a responsibility to be a minister of the gospel for the cause of Jesus Christ. He says, we have this ministry. That's plural. We learned a long time ago, didn't we, Miss Linda, that plural doesn't just mean one person. Group. More than one. And speaking to the believers, we know the context here of this. We have this ministry. And so I would submit to you, dear friend, this morning, you as a believer have the responsibility. And you need to understand that that responsibility is more than just showing up for designated time of service and sitting in your pew. The responsibility is greater than that. You don't check off a list and God's pleased when you're up. Well, Lord, I was in my place at my time of service and my response. No, my friend, we have this ministry, he says. It's personal. Notice, second of all, it's possessive. We, what's the next word? Have. We're not looking for. We're not trying to decipher the code, are we? Aren't you thankful salvation is full and free and simple and available to all? We have. All of us know what possession of something is. And by the way, aren't you thankful for all God has given you? Amen? I don't have time to, 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 to run that path this morning. But boy, I'm thankful for all of his blessings on our life. And listen to me. I'm not talking about material blessings. He's been good to all of us there as well. But I'm thankful for all of his blessings and his goodness in my life. I hope you are in your life. We possess the blessings of God, right? They belong to us. We have those things because they have come from the hand of God. But we're not talking about that kind of possession this morning. Here he's talking about we possess, we have a responsibility. It's ours. It's, it's in your hands this morning, my dear brother. It's in your lap this morning, my dear sister. We have it. We, we possess it as a child of God. It belongs to us. The responsibility is personal and it's possessive. It has to be fulfilled. But then would you notice, thirdly, it's not only personal and possessive, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. You're a preacher, where do you get that from? Oh, let me tell you. Seeing we, personal, have, possessive, this, it doesn't say obligation. It doesn't say duty. It doesn't say necessity. It says we have this ministry. This ministry, when I think of the word ministry, and you look at where the root word comes from here in the Greek language, it has the idea of a service or duties that a servant performs for a master. Can I tell you, back in the days where that was more popular and accepted, right or wrong, uh, that that existed, man, those, those servants, and even today for the million and billionaires who have people in their service, and, you know, what? it's a privilege for them. You know, their life would not be as good as it was if they were not a servant to the master that they're serving. Agreed? So here it's a privilege because we're not looking at obligations that I'm doing. We're not looking at duties that I'm doing. We're not looking at necessities and things we have to check off a list. We're looking at a privilege of serving the most high God in the ministry that he's called us to. It's a privilege this morning, my friend, to be involved in serving the King of kings and the Lord of lords. One man said it this way, he says, if you look at serving Christ as a burden instead of a privilege, you will be a drudge and do only what is required of you. End of quote. That stings a little bit, doesn't it? But it's true. If we serve out of duty... If we serve because we have to, if we serve because somebody's going to check on us, if we serve because there's a list of guidelines and things we're supposed to uh, operate by, if we serve out of duty, it's going to be a drudge, and you're only going to do enough to get by. May I share with you this morning that our areas of service to God, help me here, should not be a burden. 
should not be a burden. I'm not, I'm not saying that we don't feel like Paul at times when we're burdened down and, and, and we fight through those things. But serving God should not be a burden to any of us. Why? It's a privilege. But somehow in this selfish world and society we live in, we've gotten this truth all messed up, haven't we? Somehow, our service has become all about us. And we've blown this thing up from what God calls us to. We have a responsibility. Are you fulfilling yours? And are you fulfilling it the right way? As a privilege to serve. Second of all, we are recipients I'm thankful Paul lets us know here in this verse that not only do we have a responsibility, but we are recipients. Did you catch it? Therefore, tying us to the new covenant, seeing we have this ministry, notice, as we have received, help me. Let's try that again. As we, y'all wake up, okay? I just saw some eyes. Woo! As we have received, fill in the blank, class. There we go. Mercy. Listen, don't, 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 don't fall asleep or get in your little, your little hut right now. This is engagement time. This is preaching time. Mercy. Are you thankful that you've received mercy in your life? Bountiful mercy. Plenty of mercy he's given us. So Paul was aware that he had received this gracious gift of mercy. Hey, Paul knew that he, the reason he was in ministry, hear me, was not because any merit of his own. Paul didn't get teacher of the year. Paul didn't get pulpiteer of the year. Paul didn't get best communicator of the year. Paul didn't get any accolades that placed him in the ministry. He was simply in the ministry and serving the king of kings because of the mercy of God in his life. The only reason any of us serve is because of his great mercy in my life. And in your life, no merit of his own, only by the grace and mercy of God had he been saved and he'd been given the opportunity to share in this ministry. Would you rejoice with me this morning if you're a child of God? You're a recipient of mercy. (laughs) More so than probably we realize, you're a recipient of his mercy. Not giving us what we deserve. You personally receive that into your life. What a blessing. What a testimony. What's something that we ought to shout about. Brother, Brother Caleb, help me uh, uh, with the order and speed, please. First Peter uh, chapter 2 and verse 10. I've just got some verses here I don't want to take time to go to. Whoa. He, I might need your, where Brother James go? I might need them glasses. All right, here we go. I didn't write these down. Which in the past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now, but now, but now have attained mercy. Amen. I'm thankful we got mercy. Help with the next one. 1 Timothy 1 and 13. I guess I'm going to have to stay down here to read them. 1 Timothy 1 and 13. You got me, brother. Use your fast fingers this morning. Okay. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor? And injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Aren't you thankful that no matter what your sin was in the past, God has bestowed mercy upon us now and still gives us the privilege to serve him. God, don't mistake it. God is the one that put Paul in the ministry. God is the one that puts and places you and I in the ministry. And please understand, apart from his mercy, none of us, none of us would have the privilege of serving him. God, help us remember that. We do not choose ourselves. We do not get put in places because of our own talents and abilities. No, it is all because of his mercy. And Paul's testimony should cause us all to pause and take inventory of our life. Realizing anything we do is by his grace. Through his mercy that he's bestowed upon our lives. And I'd submit to you, starting right here with myself, please understand there are no superstars in the piano. I mean, in the piano. 
That's my second one. I got my, got my P's going on here. There are no superstars in the pulpit. There are no superstars on the pianos. There are no superstars behind some uh, 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 lectern, podium, in a classroom. Folks, we are not superstars. We are servants of the most high God. And brother Dan, God forbid that I ever think I stand here and preach because I've learned how to exegete a passage and how to deliver my God. I would be nothing outside of his mercy and his grace in my life. Whether you're a rookie or been serving for 50 plus years, the Christian service to God has its roots in his mercy as our redeemer. Hallelujah. I'm privileged to stand before you today and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ because of his mercy in my life. And rather, David, than him giving me the punishment that I deserve, he gave me forgiveness. That was quiet. Let me try that over here one more time. Rather, Brother Wayne, than him giving me the punishment I deserve in hell, he gave me forgiveness for my sin. That is why <laughs> Paul could say we have this ministry as we have received mercy. We serve him not from experience. Amen. We serve him not from our knowledge. We serve him not from our skill. We serve him not from our ability. We serve him from gratitude in our hearts for his mercy upon each and every one of us. Now think about that with me as we move into our last and final point. Does your service, your ministry, reflect that kind of gratitude? Because my fear is, and you know, I always level straight with you. And churches of America today, because it has become so much about us, and because we think that the pulpit or the piano is so blessed, uh, it's because we are participants in the ministry, and we are just fooey on all that mess. But I fear that our service does not come from a gratitude of his mercy or if it does we've got it so skewed and we've looked at every other angle that doesn't matter and allowed that to cloud out and make the waters murky what truly matters does your service answer it right now to the holy spirit does your service match the gratitude that we have for his mercy aren't you thankful for his mercy this morning say amen Third and finally, we have a responsibility. I hope you own that this morning. Don't pass it off to nobody. It's you. We're recipients. We serve because of his mercy. And if you think you're serving for any other means, you're serving from the wrong perspective. And then thirdly, because of this, because of this, look at the end of the verse. Therefore, seeing we, all of us have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we're recipients. We faint not. We ought to be resolved to not faint. We ought to be resolved to make that our slogan. We faint not. We grow tired? Yes. Sometimes we grow weary, yes. Sometimes we're burned down, yes. But Lord, Lord, I have a responsibility to carry out. And I can carry out the responsibility because I've been a recipient of your mercy in my life. God, I'm going to pledge and I'm going to vow and I'm going to do everything I can to get back to the resolve of I will not faint and grow weary and quit. We faint not Literally, it has the idea, and I'm going to read it all because I think it's so uh, important to all of us. 
We have the responsibility to not give up. We have the responsibility to not lose heart. We are to have the resolve to not become discouraged. We are to resolve to not be faint-hearted. We are to resolve to not be despondent. We are to resolve to not be discouraged. He uses the word not there. And in their language, that brought about an intensity that meant an absolute negative. A negation of the idea. Absolutely no questions asked. No pandering around. He says we absolutely cannot faint in the ministry that God's called us to. He says we faint Not. In no way, he says, are we losing heart. We are not becoming discouraged. We're not becoming despondent with fear. We're not becoming faint with weariness and exhaustion. And then even more, Bobby, I learned as I looked at those words, lose heart. Lose heart is in the present tense. And I've shared that with you before, but that means it has a continual attitude in spite of the challenges Paul faced, he used verbiage and words that meant regardless of the attacks, regardless of the criticism, regardless of whether you think I'm qualified or not, I will not faint in the ministry. Hallelujah. That God has called me to. And that had a continual attitude in spite of the challenges to his character and conduct from those of his day. So church, listen up, please. And everyone look just here just a minute. When I stop and think of all God has done for this old sinner saved by grace, listen to me. How can I not resolve and commit in my spirit to keep serving him faithfully? Despite, and then you just throw in the whole bucket, because I don't care what it is you call it. For me, it's all the same mess. Despite all of that, Paul says, we faint not. He's resolved because he was a recipient of mercy. I read this quote. Let me share it with you. The author said this, The way we view our ministries will often help determine how we will fulfill it. If it becomes a burden instead of a privilege, then it becomes easy to quit. When things don't go our way. Paul, overwhelmed by God's grace and mercy, which gave him the tenacity to keep on serving Christ, regardless of his circumstances, regardless of what others said about him, regardless if anyone responded the way he wanted them to. Do you sense Paul's tenacity in how he's serving even in spite of everything working against him. Do you sense it? What a quote. And, and in my notes, for those of you that do texting emojis, you know the, the, the little emoji that has mind blown? Preacher, that's how my mind was when I read that. How you go about your ministry. If you view it as a burden, you'll be on the sidelines before you know it. But if all of us, starting with this preacher, can wrap our minds around, it is a privilege to serve God because of his mercy bestowed upon us. Then I think with that kind of spirit and with that kind of tenacity, I can join Paul in saying, we faint not. Not because of my own strength, not because of my own abilities, but because of what he has done for me. I'm going to skip some of the verses, Brother Caleb, but Proverbs 24, 10 says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Brother Lance, I don't want to faint. I don't want to quit. I don't want to throw in the towel. One of the great works of musical 
history is Handel's Messiah. Dad, you love that arrangement. And as I read about that a little bit, it's recorded that the whole work composed, I didn't know this, but if this resource is accurate, the whole work was recorded in 22 days. You know, nowadays, and I'm not, I, I, I don't need to say that, but 22 days. I'll leave that for another message. And that during that time, the report said that Handel would scarcely consent to both eat and sleep during those days. Very little food, very little sleep in a 22-day period. But he goes on to say, he said, I found my strength in the Lord. Resolve that we will not faint. Listen to me, dear friend. If statistics play out in our church as they do in the Church of America, some of you today feel like fainting. Another category would be some of you just got over a faint spell and God just renewed you and God just brought uh, you uh, to a, a new peak. Others of you, if not in those first two categories, will soon find yourself in a time of weariness. You'll find yourself where you're wanting to faint, you're wanting to quit, you're wanting to throw in a towel, you're wanting to give up. But I ask you to hear me. In light of all that God <laughs> has done for me and has done for you, I'm going to ask you in just a moment to rejoin me in renewing your resolve. God, we faint not. Absolute negation to the idea of fainting. In light of great mercy, discouragement cannot win. In light of God's great mercy, discouragement should not win. Discouragement must not win. Hey, in church, with God's help, discouragement will not win. Amen? We will press on as a believer, as a minister. Make it a lowercase m in your mind so you understand as we, that's all of us, will press on. Why, preacher? Because we have a responsibility. We faint not. Amen. Hey, because we are recipients of his mercy, we faint not. Hey, because he's redeemed us with his precious blood on Calvary's cross, we faint not. Hey, because he delivered me from the burning flames of fire in hell. Hey, because he's rescued me, we faint not. Amen. And church, I would say, because my name, although undeserved, Brother Vance, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And with that reality, I join Paul in resolving to say, we faint not. Would you stand with me, please? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. And I ask you, to help every single one of us to humble ourselves in this moment. For anybody who has served you and ministered for you to pretend that they never have been weary, they never have been discouraged, they're not battling 